Soil pH is one of the soil characteristics that we have the ability to most easily and economically impact in our soil. Lime is the product that we use most often to adjust soil pH. Lime helps improve both the soil characteristics and the quality and quantity of what we produce on our land. My name is David Youngquist. I'm a certified crop advisor and agronomist for Skagit Farmers Supply here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we're out on a beautiful early spring day and uh, this time of year I get a lot of questions about lime and when is the correct time to apply. So let's talk a little bit about the soil characteristics of soil pH and the chemistry. Soil pH is extremely important. It helps dictate the microbes in our soil, the macroorganisms, the microorganisms, and the soil chemistry. Now let's go back to our high school chemistry classes for just a second here. Let's remember that pH is on a log scale. So the difference between a pH of 4 and a pH of 5 is, ten, is about a tenfold difference. Now you take that to a pH of 6, pH of 6 is 100 times different than a pH of 4. So a pH of 4 is 100 times more acidic than a pH of 6. Therefore, when we have 1 or a 2 pH difference from where our target goal is, we're making a very large impact on what the roots in our soil see. Most of the nutrients in our soil are taken up in a soil solution. Now any good chemist worth of salt is going to tell you that the pH of a solution is very important in determining both the outcome and speed of those chemical reactions that take place in those solutions. So, now that we understand why pH is so important in our soils, it's really important to talk about what we do and how we affect pH. Soil pH in the Pacific Northwest usually ranges between 4.5 and 6.5 pH. Ideal range for most of the crops we grow is 6 to 7 pH. That being said, I get a lot of questions that re revolve around, would lime benefit my pasture? The answer is almost always yes. The same is true for your garden or lawn. If you find yourself asking if you need lime, it's probably because you haven't made a lime application to your ground in the last 5 to 50 years. Most often times, about a ton of lime is sufficient to keep our pH steady for a period of 5 to 10 years, depending on the soil characteristics of our land. There's a lot of factors that have an influence on soil pH, such as CEC, the amount of sand, silt, and clay in our soils, the amount of organic matter, and the parent material that our soil originally came from. So the best way to determine this is to take a soil test. In a soil test, they'll determine how much lime is required to adjust your pH. And it varies drastically, as we talked about, with the log scale. Taking that soil test is going to determine exactly how much lime we need to adjust our pH. I've seen a pH of 5 require 1 ton and also seen a pH of 5 require up to 4 ton to get back to that 6 pH minimum mark. So you really need a test to make sure that you are sampling correctly and that you are putting on the right amount. We carry soil test kits at all of our country store locations and a proper lab analysis is really the best way to determine what you need. Lime has three main benefits that it brings when we lime our ground. It helps raise the pH like we talked about because it has a pH of around 8.5, but it also brings calcium to our soil. The calcium is beneficial for both our plants and our soil. In our plants, calcium does things like help regulate water usage. It helps dictate where certain nutrients and certain molecules within the plant should be directed to new parts of growth or roots and most importantly it helps build strong cell walls. Strong cell walls which help fight off diseases, insects, and nutrient deficiencies. Nutrient deficiencies in our crops can look like hollow core in broccoli, hollow heart in potatoes, bitter pit in apples, and blossom end rot in tomatoes. If you've seen any of those conditions, you probably do have a calcium deficiency in your plants. Also, one of the most common and early signs of calcium deficiency is a browning or dieback at the tips of new growth. Calcium in our soil is very beneficial in helping to help our soil flocculate. Flocculation is the ability for soil particles to combine to each other and make nice aggregates Good aggregation of our soil is important to help with water infiltration, 
penetration, and to help with our roots ability to grow around those aggregates. Also very, very important is good aggregation to allow for proper air movement through our soil. Lime comes in two main forms. Regular limestone, also known as limestone flower, and dolomitic lime. Dolomitic lime also contains magnesium carbonate rather than just 100% calcium carbonate as is the active ingredient in limestone flour. Now both of them usually contain a certain amount of granite because granite is usually found in the limestone quarries at the same time and contain a small percentage. One of the other characteristics about lime that we find is it's sometimes very difficult to handle. Ground limestone flour is just that. It's the consistency of flour and handles similar to it. As you can see, it is very difficult to control, especially in a slight breeze. So, cost per acre, I usually lean towards the prilled limestone, which is much easier to handle and distribute evenly on our land, so that we get the most out of our time that we spend putting it on, and that we get a good even application. Usually it's about a 35% cost difference, and I find that when I get done putting on limestone flour, I look something like the Michelin Man. Both limes are available in 50 pound bags. They're also available in one ton tote sacks by special order. And depending on the product, we do carry some bulk prilled lime. One of the other main advantages of bulk prilled lime is we can treat it just like we treat any of our organic or conventional fertilizers. Meaning all of the same equipment that you use to spread your fertilizer will work with prilled lime and we can use it to do things like mix with seed blends or apply with our fall fertilizer. One of the most common application rates for lime is one ton per acre and usually that seems to be about the economic threshold for most people at any given time. A lot of people do apply lime on an annual basis, usually with their fall fertilizer application at a rate of around two to four hundred pounds per year. Again, that is sufficient to maintain your soil pH. Fall is usually the time I prefer to spread lime. Winter and early spring are both very effective, but I like to make sure that we have all winter for that lime to activate and be able to adjust the pH of our soil for that early spring growth. Really the only consideration I have on lime is make sure that you're applying it when you're going to receive enough water to incorporate it and activate it. So. 9 out of 12 months in the Pacific Northwest is usually a good time to put on lime. Lime takes 3 to 6 inches of water to fully activate, but a quarter inch is usually sufficient to get it into the ground and safe. Prilled lime is also much better at remaining where we put it, where the flower tends to blow away in a stiff breeze, so I like to make sure I put flower out when we have rain coming. You know, fairly often I get asked questions about lime, such as, I have moss in my yard, will the lime kill the moss? Or, I must need lime in my pasture because I have buttercups. Well, both of these indicate that your grass is not growing sufficiently to outcompete those troublesome weeds. And lime is probably part of the equation to balance your soil. Lime will neither kill moss, nor is buttercups an indication that your soil is acidic. There could be some other factor playing a role in why buttercups are outcompeting the grass in your field. Lime is very beneficial in balancing that soil and making our other nutrients more available and also making a better home for those roots so that they are better at finding those nutrients and growing efficiently. Two of the other considerations with both of those pests are Make sure that your mowing height or grazing height is not too close and watch your watering because overwatering and underwatering both have a tendency to allow for those pests to become an issue. Thirdly, we carry lots of great products to kill moss. Both iron sulfate and zinc sulfate are effective at killing moss and Terracite Pro is one of my favorites. They all have their advantages and benefits. Please be sure to read all the labels. Now that you're more prepared to go out and spread lime, Make sure you contact one of our country source to get the resources you need. And remember, make sure that you always look to balance your soil because that's how we get the optimum growth.